What's going on, everybody? Welcome in the Vikings Now by Chad Sports. My name is Patrick Seatman. Coming up on today's show, I want to go over five storylines that I am looking forward to watching as Vikings training camp is going to get underway in actually less than four weeks from now. Couldn't be more excited about it. But hey, if you guys are excited as well, send me a message. Like today's video. And also, uh, when you guys do do so, it just helps us get this channel, helps us get this video out to more and more Vikings fans. So if you guys want a free, easy way to support the program, hit that thumbs up icon. All right, the number one story I'm looking at um, during training camp has to be the battle for left guard. Like, I think all, you know, 22 positions on offense and defense are pretty locked in on who we believe the starter is going to be. But left guard, it's a coin flip, and it comes down to these two guys. Blake Brandell and Dalton Reisner. Now, take a look at the PFF grades right here. Obviously, Reisner was the starter for majority of the season at that left guard spot for the Vikes. But when he did go down, it was Blake Brandell stepping in there. And he was active in all 17 games. Uh, Dalton Reisner did only play 15. But the PFF grades are about the same. Reisner has the advantage in pass blocking. But then Brandell has the advantage in the run block department. But Brandell allowed one sack, had two penalties, and then Dalton Reisner on the other side had zero sacks allowed, and then he had three penalties. And we were hearing reports that the coaches absolutely love Blake Brandell. Chris Cupper, Vikings offensive line coach, raved about the shape he came into Vikings OTAs. And, you know, I, I am a believer in Brandell. Like, I love the size, six foot seven, 360 pounds. And, you know, even though Reisner is the more proven NFL players so far in their career, I still think it is a coin flip as it uh, stands right now on who is going to be the starter heading into week one. But Ben Gessling um, did have this quote breaking down the Reisner contract, which I think this indicates that, you know, it is going to be a competition. Like if the Vikings were paying how much to say three, four million dollars heading into the season fully guaranteed, then yes, I would probably get on here and say, I expect Reisner to be the starting left guard. But he did only get a base salary of $1.41 million, only 600000 guaranteed. That is it. They did give him a $500,000 signing bonus and a $500,000 roster bonus, and the total ends up uh, becoming $2.41 million. Uh, I expect him to make the roster and, you know, obviously he did just get a signing bonus. So I expect that $2.41 million to be fully given to Dalton Reiser. But my prediction, I would still go Dalton Reisner as the starting left guard, but, you know, it's just going to come down to the Vikings coaching staff. But the number two storyline, I'm watching. The wide receiver three battle. We got to talk about it. I know it's like beating a dead horse right now. Who's going to be wide receiver three? Yada, yada, yada. But there's going to be a big-time competition heading into camp. And I think it's a three-headed race right now. I think it's going to be Brandon Powell as, you know, a player who is familiar with what Kevin O'Connell likes to do. You know, um, you know, was with him when he was with the Rams, knows the offense very well. Then you got Trent Sherfield, who's coming over from the Miami Dolphins. He's more of a run blocking wide receiver. You know, that's his specialty. And then you got former six round pick Jalen Naylor. If you guys have watched this show, you know I'm a big fan of his game. He's super silky, getting in and out of routes. And you know, if I had to call or not call, if I had to pick my wide receiver three. I'm probably going Jalen Naylor, mainly just because I'm a believer in him. I think he's going to end up working out in the NFL. I just think it comes down to opportunity with him, and he hasn't really had that chance, you know, since it has been, you know, Jefferson and Thielen or Jefferson and Addison at one and two, and then obviously K.J. Osborne being the wide receiver three here for the past couple of years. I don't think the Vikings will bring in another wide receiver, and, you know, we've heard, you know, other ESPN reporters and just other NFL media members you know, link the names, you know, such as Hunter Renfro, Michael Thomas to the Vikings. I just can't really see that being the case. I think they're comfortable with what they have at that wide receiver three spot, and they're just going to let those three guys, you know, battle it out during camp. But storyline number three, I wanted to put the battle for QB1, um, but I think even if Sam Darnold has the worst training camp in training camp histories, he will still be quarterback one uh, heading in the MetLife Stadium week one for the Minnesota Vikings. But quarterback two between J.J. McCarthy and Nick Mullins, this has to be J.J. McCarthy. Like, there is no reason to even trot out Nick Mullins at all this season. Like, I understand. I have been saying countless times here on the channel, sit J.J. McCarthy. I don't want him, you know, to be out there throughout his entire first season. But if, let's just say, Sam Darnold, you know, knock on wood here, like, let's just say he does get hurt and does go down due to the injury, I would just throw in J.J. McCarthy and just, you know, 
have him kind of go through the uh, you know learning curves and just really just get his feet wet uh, in the NFL. So you know I think there's no reason to play Mullins this year. You know he is uh, you know we called him cardiac Mullins on the channel last year. Is uh, you know some games he would go for 400 yards, four touchdowns, also have four interceptions on top of that. Uh, made for an entertaining watch. Like he's kind of got that Jameis Winston you know, in him, but I just really see no reason to, you know, play him at all this upcoming season. And, you know, in terms of quarterback three, you know, Nick Mullins or Jaron Hall, I would probably lean Nick Mullins just to have that, you know, other veteran kind of presence around J.J. McCarthy because, you know, Jaron Hall, he's a fifth-round rookie, even though he is older. I just don't really see any benefit to this team as a whole moving forward to keep him on the roster. But the fourth storyline I'm watching for is the backup safety position. Now, the Vikings safety room is absolutely loaded. Um, on 94% of defensive snaps last year, the Vikings ran three safeties. So the safety position is clearly important for Brian Flores and Kwesi Adolfo Mensa in terms of keeping, you know, however many safeties they want on the roster. But, you know, you do have the three-headed monster in Bynum, Smith, and Metellus, but who's going to be the backup safety? Like, you look at the three names, you know, or the other three names on screen right now, like Jay Ward, uh, I like him out of LSU entering his second year, you know, Lewis Seen, talk about him here in a sec, but like Theo Jackson, and then we also did get reports that Najee Thompson, special teams demon, he is going to be moving to the safety position for this upcoming year. So where does that leave a lot of these guys? Well, I think it leaves Lewis Seen looking on the outside in um, in terms of making this team, and I think he will be cut. I would be very, very shocked if he does end up making this roster, because think about it, you got the big three, they're making it no doubt, they're going to keep Jay Ward, they're going to keep Theo Jackson, and if they're picking a six safety, they're definitely choosing Najee Thompson over Lewis Seen because he is one of the best gunners in the NFL right now, so, you know, not really a bold prediction, a lot of other Vikings media members have kind of predicted this, but, you know, I do think Lewis Seen will be cut, just feel bad for him, as he was a former first-round pick, just you know, he's only played 10 defensive snaps in his NFL career so far, so we don't really know what he is. It's just, you know, the Vikings have a lot of top-end talent at the position, and obviously him suffering that compound leg fracture his rookie year just did not help his case on proving himself in the NFL. But number five for me, in terms of storylines I'm watching heading the training camp, that battle for tight end two slash tight end three. So, you know, as we know, TJ Hawkinson, he won't be back until probably around early to mid-November, so somebody's going to have to step up. Josh Oliver, best blocking tight end in the NFL. He will be in that tight end two spot as, you know, that lead blocking tight end, and he has some ability of catching the football. But then you got guys like, you know, Robert Tunyon, Nick Muse, Johnny Munt, and then also this guy, Nikhil Harry. I got him as a sleeper option right here. So we were getting reports out of OTAs and minicamps that he is transitioning into playing tight end this season. And I'll tell you what, I absolutely love it for Nikhil Harry. He's a big body, six foot four, 225 pounds. Obviously, doesn't create the most separation. So switch him to tight end. He's going to get a lot of linebackers on him. He's going to get a lot of, you know, slot corners. And I think he could take advantage of that. So, you know, former first round pick, all types of talent, you know, with Harry. So keep your eyes out on him, uh, eyes out on him as a sleeper option. But how about Robert Tunyon? And this is what Wes Phillips had to say about Tunyon, uh, Vikings offensive coordinator, after they worked him out. He said Robert Tunyon had a great workout for us. It was kind of one of those workouts where you just watch the guy run and catch, and he understands what you're asking from him or what you're asking him to do from his experience. And it was just kind of a no-brainer. Everyone looked around and said, yeah, you know, let's get him. So I think he's really going to help us. And obviously with TJ being out, I think Robert can kind of fill in some of those roles that TJ did for us. And you know, also Alec Lewis, after minicamp for the Vikings, said Robert Tunyon has looked great in minicamp. No hyperbole. Catching everything. Snagged mul multiple passes in the red zone period today. Outstretch arms. Toe tapping in the corner of the end zone. Just impressive. And, you know, funny enough, Robert Tunyon has actually completed the NFC North, uh, you know, whole division. As he was a UDFA with the Lions, really came onto the NFL scene with the Packers, was with the Bears this past season, and now he's with the Minnesota Vikings. So he's played for every NFC North team. But I definitely do think he is a great, great option um, in, terms of a, in terms of a guy that could step in for TJ Hawkinson as he is still rehabbing from that injury. But get your red pens out for me. I want you guys to grade the Vikings roster, A, B, C, D, or F. If I have to give it a letter grade, I'd probably go B. A lot of top-end talent on this team. You know, a little concerned on the depth of this roster. But, you know, 
who cares about depth? It's always about the main 22 guys that are playing. So, you know, back to school, grade the Vikings roster. I would appreciate it down in the comments. And as always, guys, you guys give me a follow on Twitter. That's the handle right there, at Pat Seeps. If you guys do so, and uh, I will give you guys a follow back on, uh, or when I do get the chance. So give me a follow. See you guys next time. As always, Skull Vikings. Thank you.